Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. I'm actually really excited to be running this one today. It's the very first time for our SMS 101 for small business. And I know that there's a lot of curious people out there as to how, if, when, and why they can use SMS marketing. So if you are joining me for the first time today, this is the first time I'm running this webinar. So you are uh, one of the first participants to go through it. Just getting my screen a little bit organized here today. So uh, as usual, I don't like to muck around. I know I've only got an hour to spend with you and I love my webinars to be full of as much information as they possibly can be. So I'm going to get straight into it. You will notice that your uh, microphones have been muted and your videos are turned off. However, this is an interactive webinar. So if you have any questions or anything that you'd like to bring up throughout the session, please don't hesitate to send me a message in the chat and I'll make sure that we get those answered for you. Now, as usual, you will receive a copy of the recording of these webinars. These webinars are actually one run through the Australian Small Business Advisory Services Program, and that is brought to you across Queensland, Northern Territory and Western Australia by Business Station and Treaty Business Consulting. So uh, you will get a copy of these, but I do suggest that you have a notepad and pen next to you in case, like me, you like to jot things down when you come to these training sessions as well. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kerry Sabrin. I'm the co-founder of Altitude Business Solutions, and we've been part of the Digital Solutions Program now for about two and a half going on three years. It's something that we really uh, enjoy, and it gels with our business, which is all around digital education. So that's a little bit about me. Now, you are in the right place today if you are ready to learn more about SMS marketing and how to use it to grow your business. It may have been something that you've considered uh, but haven't actually put into practice because maybe you don't know how or maybe you're not sure of exactly how successful it is at how it works. So today we're going to be going through a few things. I'm going to be talking to you about exactly what SMS marketing is why SMS marketing matters for your business, what you need to be aware of if you are going to start using SMS marketing, some best practices, and I'm going to be having a chat to you about the best ways to get started and maybe some programs that might be able to help you out there. Now, the first thing that we're going to be talking about is what is SMS marketing? Well, SMS stands for short message service marketing, and it's a form of marketing that businesses use to send promotions to customers via text message. Um, it's used to convert leads and to keep customers engaged as well. So I'm sure at some point in time, you have all received an SMS marketing message, whether that is from a local politician who might be running, or it could very well be from a company that you've purchased from before, and they're looking at trying to uh, re-engage you. Um, now, it could be that uh, you've purchased, as I said, you've purchased something and you've received something. Um, this can be all automated through a lot of online shops as well. Excuse me. Um, these messages are normally very short. Something along the lines of uh, Rockman's offer, 20% off today in store or online, www.rockmans.com.au. It's, it's literally that simple. It's straight to the point. Um, it's a message that's designed to interrupt the customer's day and quickly offer them an option. Um, it, and it always has an opt-out feature. So you'll notice it'll say something like, reply stop to opt out now. Um, as a rule of thumb, a, a message, a short message should only contain around about 160 characters or less. We're wanting to get straight to the point. So different to email, so email marketing is still sending out a message, it's still words, I get all of that. But in email marketing, people tend to sort of go on a little bit more, a little bit more detail. SMS is straight to the point. It is, it is the way that I love to communicate. I'm a very direct communicator. I don't need all the blah, blah. Just tell me what it is that you're giving me. Rockman's is giving me 20% off today in store and online. There's the link. So it's telling me what I need to do. It's telling me what I'm going to receive. And it's giving me an option to go to the website and purchase as well. So very direct communication. So if SMS marketing has been around for a little while, why does it matter so much to small businesses? Well, as a consumer yourself, you're probably aware of how much we are inundated with marketing messages and materials every day. 
I mean, they say something along the lines of 100,000 messages a day. And I, sometimes I think, oh, you know, that's hard to believe. But you need to think a marketing message is driving past a sign on the highway, past a shop that has a sign in front of it. Like we just are inundated with marketing day in, day out. So it's interesting because with all of this marketing that we have thrown at us on a regular basis, it, it makes us a little bit desensitized. We don't notice things as often as we used to, or possibly we should notice them. Now, research has actually shown that consumers aren't receptive to traditional marketing methods like they used to be. Okay, so, uh, you know, things like a sign on, on a shop used to work really well when that was the only marketing message that we were being thrown at us on a daily basis. We now carry around these mobile phones in our pocket. So we can also find that there is more marketing messages coming through on there. Even when you're trying to be social in the social media world, as they call it, um, you are having advertising messages that are thrown at you as well. So there are some desensitizations that have happened because of the way that marketing has evolved over the last few years. Email is a really good example. So the average open rate for an email is 23%. And emails normally have a click through on average of about 2.6%. Now, I don't want to bag email because those of you that have been to my email marketing webinar will know I'm a massive fan of email and email probably equates to 65% of the business that I get month in, month out. But it is certainly people have become desensitized to it. When email first came out, you know, we were excited to get an email into our inbox. Now we're getting this stuff called spam, aren't we? Sometimes I know with some of my email addresses, I'm getting 100 emails a day and I'm unsubscribing left, right and centre. I'm trying to get that down, but I'm still getting these marketing messages that are coming through. Every time I purchase something, I get marketing material from that, from that particular company. Um, and I'm sure that there's third party apps that I've entered my email address into that have, are selling my information on a regular basis because I constantly get things that I have no idea how they got my email. So because of that, because of the way email has evolved, we've become a little bit less, you know, a bit desensitized uh, to it. It's not as effective as it used to be. Now, email marketing, as I was saying, has an average open rate of around 23%. So if you're only sending an email out to 10 people, you've, you, know, you might have two open it, you might have one that clicks through to the website. So email is a numbers game. The more people you are sending the email out to, the better chance you have of more people clicking on it and ending up through the website. So while I'm not saying that marketing uh, email is definitely not dead and gone, uh, it certainly has desensitized over the, over the years. Now, without ever expanding digital transformation in our, in our lives, a modern day customer experience that meets multiple people means that we have to be on multiple platforms. And I love this little graphic that I've got here because you'll see here it's got communication in the middle, you've got internet, you've got social media, you've got media, you've got network and you've got mobile phone. So what I'm saying is that there will be customers out there who are very receptive to email and there will be customers out there who are very receptive to social media. There will be customers out there who are very um, uh, receptive to network marketing. And likewise, there are customers out there who are very receptive to mobile phone or SMS media. Now, the thing that I will say, and I don't know if you've noticed this, but when I get an SMS message, I tend to open it up under normal circumstances. My social media, you know, the little red uh, circle with the numbers in it for the social media and whether that is for social media or uh, it could possibly be for my messages, it can have, a, you know, 50 in it and it doesn't worry me whatsoever. But I cannot have any numbers in my SMS. That has to be cleaned out. I can't have a message sitting there that I haven't read. So I'll always open it up and read it out. And sometimes... They catch me at a great time where I can go, oh, a sale on today. Oh, I might head to the website and look at, look at um, what they're offering. 
And so they can get that instant reaction from me sometimes, but not all the time. But what I'm saying to you here with this, with this graphic that I've got up on the screen is you need to communicate with your consumers or possible consumers on multiple different platforms because we are all receptive to something different. I know people who say, oh, God, don't send me an email. It'll just end up in spam. I've got my filter set up. It's just a waste of your time to be even bother be sending that to me. Mm-hmm. And then I've got other people that say, you didn't send an email out about that. So they're very receptive to email. They want to receive the email. Uh, I know other people who will automatically unsubscribe from a mobile SMS because they don't want that intrusion into their mobile phone on a regular basis. But those people are the ones that are very happy to open up an email. So everyone communicates a little bit differently. And that's why it's important that you put a, have your marketing budget and you put a little bit of your marketing budget in each one. So you're getting a little bit of a coverall. And a lot of people say to me, oh, you know, I don't do SMS marketing because I don't like to receive SMS marketing. And I understand that that, that is a point of uncomfortable for them is that they don't, in, they don't enjoy receiving it. So everybody else mustn't enjoy receiving it. And that's just simply not the case. There are some people who will continue to receive it and will also go to the actual website. Now, here's what I do. I'm one of those consumers that when those messages come through, I don't always, I'm not always responsive. I don't always go through to the website, but I also don't unsubscribe. I've got fear of missing out on that Rockman sale at 20% off, (laughs) but I don't want to miss out. So I don't unsubscribe either. So I'm kind of sitting on the fence. So when Rockman sends me a SMS saying they got 20% off, if nothing else, even if I don't go to the website and purchase something or head into store and purchase something, the name Rockman has landed and registered with me that day. And that is a form of marketing. One form of marketing that sits under the media um, a component would be your letterbox drops. So um, I worked for somebody who said, as long as there is letterboxes, I will be advertising into letterboxes. So his theory was, how much is it costing me to get a set of eyeballs on my brand or on my business name? And he worked out it was 10 cents. So it was costing him 10 cents for every letterbox drop to get a set of eyeballs or possibly more than one set of eyeballs on his branding on a daily basis. Now, what's really interesting about that is that there's a little bit of, particularly with letterbox drops, there's a little bit of um, uh, people tend to think, oh, they must be doing well because they can afford to do letterbox drops. You know, not everybody's doing that at letterbox drops dropping. And so it puts the, that particular business in a bit of an elite category. And I feel like SMS marketing is at that exact same point. So people go, oh, SMS, that's a, you know, that's a bit of an expensive way to advertise. You know, why would people do that if they're not being successful at it? So it has this air of, you know, giving people FOMO. They don't want to miss out because this must be a successful business. Uh, because they uh, are doing SMS marketing, which is a little bit expensive, let's say. That's just the kind of feel that there is at the moment with SMS marketing. So if you're thinking about starting an SMS marketing campaign, now is the perfect time. And it's the perfect time because not everybody is doing it. Uh, You will have noticed through COVID, your SMS marketing would have gone up. Um, I, you know, I had companies all of a sudden contacting me that I was like, did I purchase from you? I don't remember. And that's because companies were scrambling and going, we've been sending out emails for 10, 15 years and now all of a sudden they're not working. Well, that's because we were all of a sudden getting 50,000 emails into our inbox. I received an email from a company um, throughout COVID that was like, oh, you know, we're just touching base with you. We just want to make sure that um, you're okay. And here's what we're offering at the moment. And it actually did the opposite for me. I actually got really angry. I was like, you know what? I purchased from you seven years ago. I've not heard one single thing from you. You've never sent me a Merry Christmas, Happy Birthday, uh, any type of marketing you've never sent out to me. So, and now all of a sudden you're concerned about my well-being and my health. Uh, It just kind of felt really fake to me. So you do have to be careful about the messages that you're sending out and what you're sending out to people. Because if you're not making regular content, it can be really seen as spammy. 
Uh, anyway, back on track. Sorry, I can get a little bit off track. Um, SMS is a really great way to be able to humanize your business and get that direct communication with people where they can actually communicate back to you. Text has an open rate of 95% within the first three minutes of sending out. This is an amazing, like I had to do some research to find out this stat, but also I do SMS marketing occasionally myself with a couple of different um, in just within, within a couple of different industries. And I had to go back to, to those figures and go, okay, well, how many did we send out? And how many opened them up? And when did they open them up? Because the program that I use gives you all of that information. So what's really interesting about this is that even if someone doesn't spend money with you, 95% of those messages are getting opened. Remember email? Email was 23%. So if you send an email out to 100 people, 23 of them are going to open it. If you send that same email compacted down into a direct message of 160 characters to their mobile phone, 95% of them are going to open it. Now, for those of you that have been to my sales funnel training, you understand that somebody receiving the SMS and then opening it is the next step of the sales funnel. If they don't open the email, then it's not successful. But with a 95% success open rate at this point in time, why wouldn't you be sending them out? Now, the great thing about this is that at this stage, when it comes to privacy, so you know um, recently there's been a lot of focus on privacy for mobile phone users. So, you know, do you want this app to follow you to other websites, et cetera? There is not yet anything in terms of privacy and stopping you from sending messages to people um, with SMS unless that person is clever enough to understand that they can actually block your number. Most people don't. I know my parents definitely don't. A lot of my friends don't know. You know, I'll be sitting with someone, they'll be going, oh, I keep getting this call from South Africa. And I'm like, you know, you can block those. And like, What? I can block that number. Yes, you can. So they could block your number. They could block your SMS. Absolutely. But many people just aren't onto it at the moment in terms of privacy. So that's why it's a really great time to get into it. Now, here's some interesting stats. If you know me, you know I'm a numbers girl. So text actually has a 209% higher response rate than any other marketing. Now, 65% of consumers feel that a text message from a company makes working with a small business more convenient for them. This comes down to the whole fear of missing out. They don't want to miss out. They're appreciative that they get the message and it gives them the option to be able to go and go to that website or do what they need to do. Consumers are twice as likely to prefer text marketing over any other form of marketing it's just the way we feel about it at the moment and that may very well change you know once i'm getting 10 uh, marketing sms's a day i might start to feel a little bit differently but at the moment i'm not if i get one a week that's probably a busy week so there's no competition out there 40 percent of consumers say that they are likely to switch to a different business because they offer text messaging communication. This is key here because what I want you guys to understand is not only can you SMS marketing out, but you can SMS communication out. So if you're a business that actually has a, uh, you know, appointment setting set up, uh, you might like to send an SMS message out saying, hey, your appointment has been scheduled for, for this time. Um, and don't forget, we'd love to see you at one o'clock or, you know, please reply to confirm. We all, we've all gotten those, right? When we go to the dentist, please confirm um, to, uh, please reply yes to confirm your message. So it can, it's not just about marketing, it can be about communication as well. You know, people are saying, I love it when businesses send me text messages. Well, 40% of cons consumers love it um, when you, when they get text messages and you're, they're able to communicate. Now, 75% of consumers are okay with receiving messages from brands as long as they have an opt-out option. Now, this is really important. 
We haven't spoken about best practices, but I'll be talking about it again in best practices. Any message that you send of your 160 characters needs to have an opt-out section in it. So please reply stop to opt-out. People understand what opt-out is. You don't need to write too many more words than that, but it needs to have a, an opt-out section, section as well. Consumers um, have actually shown through their actions that they redeem SMS marketing that's delivered to them 10 times more than any other marketing, which that's just key to me. You know, those, those stats there tell me that people are still receptive to this kind of marketing at this stage and that now is a fantastic time to actually get into it. At this point in time, SMS marketing is extremely underutilised, particularly by the small business sector. So when I think about small business and I think about the SMSs that I receive, they're all coming from medium to big businesses. They're not coming from a small business. What this means is that there's a fantastic opportunity for you to have a real point of difference in your business. Now, imagine a local cafe. You know, many local cafes have their their rewards cards. You know, imagine if that local cafe actually went to the effort of sending out SMS offers on that particular day. You know, stop in today and get a free cookie with every coffee. Uh, stop in today and purchase a coffee and get a ham and cheese croissant for $2. Um, is that going to go, oh God, I hadn't thought about what I was going to have for lunch today. I might actually go there. And when you think about the expense of an SMS marketing campaign, it's, it's extremely affordable. And you think, gee, you know, really, I don't need three of the hundred people that I'm sending it to, to drop in and buy a coffee and croissant and the entire cost is covered. So it's an extremely ex, um, inexpensive way to be able to communicate with people. Oh, cost. Sorry, I should be looking ahead at my slides. I always forget. But yes, one of the most cost effective ways compared to other digital marketing campaigns. And let me tell you, Social media marketing can be cheap. Don't get me wrong. How easy is it to blow 20 bucks on a Facebook campaign? Uh, just boost now, bang, $20 gone over the next four days. Is it effective? Most often not because you're probably not boosting the right things. You're not boosting it in the right way. It's not set up properly. It's not being seen by the right people, et cetera. If you took that same $20 and sent out SMS messages, via a program to your customers or potential clients, then that is going to probably get you a thousand times more return than a Facebook advertising campaign at the moment. And the reason is, is that people are very desensitized, particularly to Facebook advertising at the moment. So we're a little bit tired, aren't we, as consumers of those advertisings coming up all the time in what's supposed to be our social space where we can catch up with friends and family. So we're a little bit over it. Um, where you know, we we're talking about desensitizing before, a little bit desensitized to it. So uh, we're not really receptive. Where SMS marketing, it's got a real, a real place at the moment. All right, things that you need to be aware of. Now, what's really interesting here is that you would have noticed in probably some political campaigns over the last sort of 12 months to two years, there's been text messages that are being sent out um, talking about the fact that there's no censorship on text messages or that there's no rules and regulations set up here in Australia in terms of SMS or text messages. And while that very well may be true, I think that there is just some common courtesy kind of rules that are in place. So I'm gonna talk about, the next slide here is talking about being compliant. Now, being compliant for me means keeping your characters under 160 characters. So keeping it short, remember SMS, short message service. It's got to be short. Get straight to the point. Don't send me a novel via message. And it must always have an opt-out. Reply stop to opt-out. Reply this to opt-out. And the reason why it's important for it to have an opt-out, many people don't even use it, to be honest with you. The majority of people will actually just continue to stay with your SMS marketing. But by having an opt-out on there, it's giving them the option. It's not making them feel like 
they have no choice but to receive your SMS marketing. If they want to unsubscribe or opt out, they can do. So when I'm talking about being compliant, that's what I'm really talking about. Um, a local business can get themselves into a lot of trouble by not kind of following the rules. Um, I want to do a little bit of myth busting um, with some, some of these things that get brought up around SMS marketing. The first one is SMS marketing always gets businesses into trouble. This is an absolutely false statement. Business gets, the businesses get themselves into trouble by not having an opt-out or by continually sending messages on a regular basis, not just because they're sending an SMS. Um, SMS marketing laws are too complicated to understand, so I'm not going to bother. This is, again, false. If somebody has given you their mobile phone number because they are a VIP customer, a previous customer, you just need to have a statement where that number is being collected that says something along the lines of, we will communicate to you via email, SMS, you know, whatever the, the forms of marketing that you'll do. So normally say email and SMS, are probably the biggest one. Um, by filling out this form, you understand we'll communicate with you about our products and services via email and SMS. That's all you have to say. Done. You're compliant. You're compliant on your website. You're compliant by sending out the person a, a text message. As long as you have that opt out on there, you are ready to go. SMS marketing is just like spam is the other myth that I want to bust because I think what's being proven is that it's not. It's so much more effective than spam and it actually works a lot, a lot more. Um, so it's definitely not like spam. And the truth is that SMS marketing done right, open, honest, love this little slide, open, honest and transparent marketing always is. It comes down to making sure that the message that you are sending out is something that's going to be effective for people, that it's got an opt-out option, and that you, you have a call to action as well. And we'll talk about that in best practices in just a few minutes. Before I go on much further, I just want a little bit of interaction from you guys. I know there's a few of you here this morning. We had a lot more registered, but I can see five of you here today. Is... Are there any questions that you have on SMS marketing that I haven't answered so far that's been sitting in the back of your mind? I'm going to go through the how-to um, very shortly, but if there's any questions, please don't hesitate to pop them into the chat for me. And no question is silly because there'll be somebody else sitting here in the room today that actually probably has the same questions. So make sure if you have any questions that you are popping them in the chat because I'd love to get them answered. Or even if you have a scenario, you know, this is the type of business that I am. Can you give me some uh, ideas on what I could possibly send out? So happy to answer those types of questions for you as well. I just want to make sure that you're, you understand this is an interactive session. I want you to get the most out of this webinar today as you possibly possibly can. So best practices for SMS. Um, we've talked about staying compliant. Now let's talk about in this section a little bit more about how to be effective. Um, as a local business, you want to use SMS marketing to engage new customers, increase customer lifetime value, and to drive more revenue. You want to do all of those things, but you don't want to come across as salesies all the time. So, um, you know, you want to make sure that you're putting in some of these best practices um, so that you can uh, get the most out of your SMS marketing. You don't want to annoy customers. I guess that's what I'm saying. You don't want to annoy them and damage your brand um, or contribute to consumer burnout either. And the real goal here is to give your text and feels the value of a one-to-one -one interaction with somebody. You don't want them to make it feel like it's just going out to everybody. Um, and there are a few key practices that you can keep in mind to help you achieve this. So the first one is to make sure you are using conversational language. One of the biggest turnoffs with marketing messages, not just SMS, but marketing messages in general, is that they sound like they are shouting at the person who's reading them, you know, buy now, offerings today. Um, and a lot of people think that this is the only way that you can appeal to people from a sales perspective. But if you are actually talking to the consumer, and I'll give you an example that I just have off the top of my head at the moment. Um, 
if you are having a conversation, let's say, for example, I need some, I'm, I'm going to talk about magnesium. I've had to increase my intake in magnesium. Sorry, this is right off the fly for you guys. So I've had to increase my intake in magnesium recently. Now, if I received an email that said, you know, magnesium tablets, are 50% off today, buy today, I'm going to oh, get to that later. But if I received a, a message that said, you know, are you needing to up your magnesium intake? We have a 50% off special today. Head to the website below, uh, reply stop to opt out. See the difference in that kind of marketing. There's a, we've got 50% off today, quick, get in. Or there's the, I'm having a conversation with you about magnesium and we've got 50% off today. It's two totally different conversations. And there will be some people who would jump straight on the, hey, 50% off, it's got to happen today. Um, absolutely. But what you find is in having conversations with your possible consumers or clients, you will actually have much more success. Um, now, that link of, about magnesium, it could lead to a sales page directly to the 50% off, absolutely. But on that sales page, if there was a conversation there that said, you know, are you suffering from, you know, muscle spasms? Are you having trouble sleeping because your legs aren't, uh, you know, uh, your muscles are spasming? Um, maybe it's a lack of magnesium. Uh, and we have a special on that's this. So you're giving me information, you're answering questions, you're um, in, in that little sales page, you then cure my fears, uncertainties, and doubts and get me to press buy. But I feel like it's more of a conversation. Um, conversational marketing is coming into play more and more because people want to get to know, like, and trust you before they purchase from you. And they can't do that if you're constantly just sending them 50% off, buy now, 50% off. They can't get to know, like, and trust you through that. But if they can feel like they're having a conversation with you, you're cementing yourself as an expert in your field and you're making them feel very comfortable about purchasing the product off them and getting them to that next stage of the sales funnel, which is the, the buy-in. Sending out your SMSs during business hours. Oh, my goodness, this is key. And that what's really interesting, what's really interesting about this is I purchase a lot of products that are sometimes from uh, the States. And so because their business hours are very different to my business hours. So when they want to send out emails and text messages and all of that kind of stuff, I'm constantly having them sent out in the middle of the night. So the first thing I do is I get up in the morning and I've got all this spam that's come from companies that I'm not really interested in doing business with again. And it's very easy to delete those first emails of the date. Would you agree? You know, you receive an email at five o'clock in the morning, you straight away assume it's from someone over in the States or the other side of the world. So what's really important with your SMSs is that you are being respectful of people's times and you are sending them out during business hours. And I, you know, I know this can be hard if you're a business that works 24 seven, um, and certainly there are some cases where I'm happy to receive an SMS at 10 o'clock at night. For example, if I've jumped online and I've purchased something and the company sends me an SMS that says, thank you very much for your purchase. Well, I've jumped online and I've sent that SMS. Uh, sorry, I've, I've purchased that product at that time. And so it sent me an SMS. But what would be more impressive is if the SMS didn't come until nine o'clock the next day and it said, hey, Kerry, thanks so much for purchasing. Um, that's going to give me a really nice follow-up. So just being aware of what your business hours are. Look at these business hours on the screen. I mean, seriously, does any business owner actually work that? I know I don't. Wouldn't it be great? Monday to Friday, finishing at 12 o'clock on a Friday, <laughs> down at the local having a, an over-the-counter steak uh, with your beverage of choice. Uh, they're just dream hours. So I don't know why I would put that up there because that's certainly not what I've worked in the last 30 years. So I don't know about you guys, but uh, yeah, they're certainly, uh, those kind of business hours are definitely gone. Um, you're being respectful, not only of other people's time, but also being respectful of your time and your business hours as well. So making sure that you sending the email out in your, sorry, the SMS out in your correct time zone at a time where you're doing business and at a respectful hour of other people's um, time is really key. 
Use simple messaging. We've all heard of KISS, right? Keep it simple, stupid. I think that was the idea behind the books. We complicate things. Honestly, we take things that are so simple and we complicate the absolute hell out of them. We really do. We uh, love to expand things and do all of that. We really complicate things. And it's keeping it simple is often hard. One of the keys, um, and, and SMS messaging will really help you do this. You've only got 160 characters to get their attention. Um, anything beyond that, you've lost them. So you need to keep it under 160, and that's got to include your opt-out. So using complex words, complex language, um, you know, long-winded things is uh, just not what people want. They, they want, it, particularly in SMS, they give it to me direct. Give me what I'm going to get, why it should be important to me and where I can get it. So 50% off today, 50% off your favourite dresses today only at Rockman's. Here's the website. Just nice and simple messaging. Do not complicate things. When we start adding in more words where they are not needed, it gives the consumer an opportunity to misunderstand us. We don't want that. We just want to be nice and simple. Have you ever had a conversation with somebody and really understood the power of silence? So understanding the power of silence is key, um, particularly in, if you're trying to sell to somebody. So, you know, when you say to somebody, uh, look, you can have an hour long session with me and it's $180 for the session. But if you can't, like we've got a payment plan, if you can't do that, like we talk ourselves out of the sale by giving too many words. So if we were to say, you can certainly book a session with me, I'm happy to send you a link to my diary and the sessions are $180 for an hour. And I guarantee you, you'll get the most amount of value out of that hour. power of silence feel that energy after you stop talking you need to give them an opportunity to process and respond um, all at once but the power of silence so sms marketing will teach you a lot about saying what you need to say about your product offer or service in as little words as possible so that you can get it out to people and get the very clear message out there provide value a real key to successful SMS marketing campaign is to provide actual value. And when I talk about value, I'm not just talking about the price of the product or service, okay? I'm not talking about, oh, give me a 50% off, you know, discount. That's, you know, that doesn't always work. That's not what I'm talking about in terms of value. I want, your, I want the value of your actual product or service to be presented so that, yes, it might be 50% off and that's great. Um, but why is the reason why? Providing value to the client as to why they need to use your product or service will always get you the sale. You need to make sure that your content is specific, relevant and unique to each person. Now, I can hear a lot of you saying, how do you do this? <laughs> but, but there is a way to do this and we will get to that. Um, you know, an example is, you know, you, you wouldn't send a 20-year-old uni student a SMS S about buying dentures unless they had dentures. You know, the presumption is that at that age, they possibly don't. So don't send me an irrelevant message. Send me something that's going to add value to me, uh, not something that's irrelevant to me. Very key. Call to action. This is where a lot of people get it wrong, not just in SMS marketing, but in marketing in general. Particularly Australians, we're a little bit reserved. You know, Americans are quite out there. They, they're not afraid to ask for things. Um, but we are very conservative, aren't we? We don't like to be too pushy. We're seen as too pushy. Um, but just making sure there is a call to action. The great thing about SMS marketing is you only have 160 characters. So you can't exactly add in words that aren't necessarily there. 50% off 
or your favourite dresses at Rockman's Today website. I don't need to put in, head to our website, just the website address. You can be very specific, just get it in there. It's Rockman's, it's my favourite dresses, it's 50% off, there's the website, go. So you're giving them a call to action. When I receive SMS marketing or even email marketing that tells me about a great product or service that somebody has but doesn't have a call to action, I literally read it and they go, oh, great, okay, yep, so there's, yep, 50% off dresses today. Oh, that's okay, great. End of story. There needs to be a call to action. Head to our website today. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Do this um, if you're sending an email. If it's SMS, just a way for them to book, a way for them to contact you, um, an address of your uh, business if you're wanting them to come into store. That's really key. Um, you know, 50% off in store today, 6 Carlisle Street, Slacks Creek. Bang. So getting that information in as little words as possible, but making sure the call to action is there. So the call to action is you want them to come to the address. You've got to put the address there. They need to know. So what are you wanting them to do? Um, call now, 1-800, blah, blah, blah. Reserve your spot now. Click here to book. Um, for any of you that might be on my email list, I send out emails out, not probably not regular enough, on the workshops that I'm doing. Um, and when they're coming up and it says click here to book your spot to this free webinar if I didn't have that call to action nobody would book in I'd be talking to no one instead of you guys so it's important that you have that call to action there make sure you include a link again I've sort of called it a little bit of a call to action but I've put it afterwards just to remind me um, don't like the other thing is, oh, what I will say, a little tip here for you, is with your links, you can have a link that is www.our2businesssolutions.com.au. That's a really long email, really long website to go to. But if you use a website called Bitly, you may have heard of Bitly, um, bitly.com, it actually shortens down your uh, web addresses to be what they call a Bitly address. So it will say uh, bitly, www.bitly. Um, dot com slash five six seven it shortens this really long down to this why is this important in sms marketing well remember i was talking to you about the 160 characters when you use some sms marketing services they only give you 160 characters so you can't go over that so you don't want every single character is one. So if I'm doing www.attitudebusinesssolutions.com.au and what if it's got the HTTPS slash slash in front of it, that's a lot of characters that's being taken up, something that can be much shorter. So you can use a, a bit.ly um, a service to be able to shorten down your, um, your actual address. And some of the SMS marketing services will actually shorten them down for you as part of their, their service. Um, but keeping it short makes it much easier. But don't forget to include a link. You want to make it convenient for people to learn more or buy from you. Respond quickly to anybody that replies with an SMS. Now, with an SMS marketing service, there is normally a platform that you can go to that shows you all of your responses so that you can update people or people can automatically opt out. But if you send me a message at nine o'clock in the morning and I reply saying, hey, I'd, I'd like to receive some more information on this or can you answer this question for me and you don't get back to me to the next day, you've lost me. Um, I work with a business that has a very responsive messaging rate. Um, they have all of their messaging screens open and they respond pretty much instantly as soon as they are um, available. So responding to your messages as quickly as possible will help you to avoid disengagement and really connect, um, increase your connectivity. Make sure you're tracking your performance of your SMSs. So it's really crucial to keep an eye on how your campaigns are performing and monitor how your audience is responding to your messages so you can make changes to the next one. Do you know what I don't want to hear? I don't want to hear you saying, I sent out an SMS once and it didn't work and I'm not doing it again. I want to hear, I sent an SMS out, 
I didn't really get a response to it. So I just, I changed the wording a little bit of the next one and I sent the next one out different. And all of a sudden that worked because that's pretty much how marketing is. It's really easy to get uncomfortable, particularly when you're in small business, because in small business, it's you, you are the person, you are the marketer, you're the business owner, you're the coffee maker, you're everything. So it's really important that you don't get scared off and go, well, I tried that, you know, I spent $20 on SMS marketing and it didn't work. Um, it could be that the messaging was not good. It, it didn't have all of the things that we've discussed. You guys will be all over it because you've now had this best practices talk. So you've got an idea, but making sure that you actually track the messages that are working or that aren't working. So you can say, well, I sent this out and it didn't work, or I sent this out and it did work. And then you can keep sending out the stuff that does. But if you don't try it, try different tactics. You are never going to know. I track everything. <laughs> Where possible, please address customers by name. So if you're using a platform that allows you to be able to put their name in, um, you know, you want to make sure that it feels a little bit like it's a one-to-one. -one -one. You know, I know when companies first started doing this, it, it makes you feel completely different when you get a message that says something like, you know, hey, Kerry, we've got 50% off all your favourite dresses at Rockman's today uh, with, with website. Um, you know, in case you're interested. It, it feels much more personal when it's got your name in it than when it doesn't have your name in it. So where possible, make sure you're using the people's name um, or making it, wording it in a way that doesn't make it sound so spammy or that it's just been sent out to everybody. The last and final step for us today is how to get started. I know you've probably all been like, okay, we've heard enough about SMS marketing. We wanna know how to get started. So there's a couple of things that um, I want you to consider. So when you are taking information from people, I'm going to go all the way back to basics. Um, when you're taking information from people, have that little disclaimer on there that says, we will be contacting you via SMS and email about our products and services. So that way you're covering yourself. And, and that can be on your website. That can be wherever you want it, wherever you're taking the information on the contact form, you know, that type of thing. Um, also get in the practice of saying, you know, if somebody, if somebody calls up or if they're, um, and you're taking their details down, saying something along the lines of, we normally contact our clients via email and SMS. Is that communication fine by you? Never has anybody ever said no to me for starters. And never has anybody even gone, oh, actually, I prefer email over SMS. I always get, oh yeah, I don't check my emails very often. And I go, that's why we also, that's why we follow up with SMS. So you're kind of like getting, getting both the consent at the same time. So getting prior consent, consent will just mean that it's nice and easy for you if you do that from the beginning and you don't have to worry about that. Um, what's important to remember is that SMS marketing can really strengthen the relationships that you have with people because it invites people to respond if that's what they prefer to do, you know. I know myself, how many times do you call somebody and they don't answer the phone, but you send them a text message and they answer or you ring and as they're ringing, they send you a text message. That happens all the time, particularly for me in my business. I spend probably 80% of my day on a Zoom call like this and quite often my phone will be ringing silently and I've got an, a custom SMS where I can send out, sorry, on a Zoom call at the moment, we'll call you soon. Um, so People respond, respond in text messages these days as opposed to, uh, you know, phone calls, even answering phone calls. Um, so you want to make it more comfortable for them. And text message feels very intimate to a lot of people as well. Technology can play a huge part in keeping you in control of your SMS marketing. And there are a number of platforms out there that you can use. Um, two of them that I'm aware of are Podium. Podium is one that deals with Australian customers. And you can see here, it, it talks about conversational marketing, which is what we've also spoken about today. But it also, um, it's uh, very easy to use, has a platform um, at, with a dashboard on it so you can see the messages that have been sent out, et cetera. So that's um, quite an easy one. Um, another one that I haven't used yet, but I'm looking at giving it a try because they do have a free trial is ClickSend. Um, click send again, very similar, has a dashboard, makes it very easy. It will collate your um, 
responses for you. So it will, it will tell you how your campaigns are going. So that's a good one. And the thing I like about this one is that they do have that free trial. Um, and the fact, I mean, you can see on there, no credit card need, needed. Um, then pay as you go best rates. The rates for SMS marketing can be so completely different from one company to the next. One company that I haven't mentioned here because they're not really the best service to use, but I've used in the past, um, is uh, straight to voicemail is another service. Um, but uh, their SMS marketing side of things is not as as comprehensive as click send or podium so I'm not really recommending them um, but you can see all your responses you can see what's been successful the great thing about sms marketing is normally if they attempt to send an sms and it doesn't work for whatever reason uh, you're not charged for that so that you kind of only charge for what you send out but I've paid anywhere from six cents to 17 cents depending on the setup so sometimes some companies and i'll be honest with you i haven't yet used podium or click send i've only just done the research um, on those two knowing that they're some of the best platforms to use watch the demos that type of thing um, but yeah anywhere from from kind of i think i paid four cents once or six cents um, to about 17 cents is the most um, most expensive that I've paid. But normally I would buy block, you'd buy block rates. So, you know, 100 SMSs is going to cost you X amount of dollars. You might only send 10 that time, um, but you've got the credits there to be able to use. So you normally kind of buy them in, in blocks. So that, um, yeah, that's kind of it. So that hopefully that has given you guys a real insight into SMS marketing i'm just conscious of the time we've got about seven minutes left mike can you see you sent through a message there uh you need help to setting up a new business service so you're looking at have you thought about having a session through the the one-on-one -on -one sessions that are available because that might be something that an expert can help you with as well and sort of go over everything because i think marketing from a new business sense needs to have a lot of different things happening so um, i'd love to be able to talk to you about that if you wanted to do so also um, but that's kind of the end of my SMS um, marketing webinar. So if you've got any questions, now's the time to pop them in. I am going to be going through a little bit of information here at the end for you. But if there's something that I haven't covered, or maybe throughout the session, you've actually had a question that's come up that you need now need answered, please pop that into the chat because I'd love to get an answer for you. As always, these sessions are brought to you through the Australian Small Business Advisory Services Program um, or the Digital Solutions Program. Sorry, it's had a name change. Um, and uh, it's available to you in Queensland, Northern Territory and Western Australia through businessstation.com.au. You can get seven hours worth of mentorship for just $44. And what that includes is three whole hours of an expert and you one-on-one. -on -one. And that may very well be that you need uh, an expert session with myself and then I might say, look, I really think that you need to talk to somebody about Facebook advertising. And so I book in another session with another, um, another expert. So it's about finding out what it is that you need in your business and making sure that you see the relevant experts. And then, of course, booking you into workshops and webinars that are relevant to where your business is at and where you want it to go. Um, and we can certainly point you into that right direction. A uh, question that's coming from Chris, could I ask for an SMS reply to my SMS? Yes, you can do. So a lot of these SMS services, they actually have a reply section. So when someone replies back to you, you're able to reply straight away. Um, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure ClickSend actually has an app, so it comes directly to your phone. The ones that I have used have always used my mobile phone number. So if someone replies to that SMS, it comes to me just like an SMS message um, that says, you know, when they ask the question, I can reply to it straight away. So you can go backwards and forwards and have a conversation, absolutely. Um, the next free workshop and webinar that we have coming up is on the 26th of April. And April feels like a short month because of Easter. Um, I've had to squash everything into the end. But the 26th, uh, the 26th of April, which is a Tuesday, I don't normally run webinars on a Tuesday, but I've had to squash an extra one in there. Um, I'll be talking about blogging in 2022. So if you want some tips on blogging and how to get started in blogging, possibly how blogging's changed a little bit over the last few years, then this, uh, this will be for you. And it is a workshop, so it goes for two hours. 
So today's webinar only goes for an hour, but we get to spend two hours together. So I will, you'll have blogging down pat by the time you get to the end of that. Now there's three options uh, for you today. Uh, first of all, you can choose to have a one-on-one -on -one, um, session with me by going through the digi digital solutions program and paying the $44 for the seven hours. Um, or you can simply choose to grab what you've learned today and run with it. So you have a lot of information being given, you, given to you here today that should allow you to get started in SMS marketing. Um, but obviously, not everyone is going to go through and do the, the seven hours worth of mentorship. You may have just come here today just to learn more about SMS and that's perfectly fine. Grab what you've learned today and run with it. Just make sure you take action. You have an opportunity to get into a very limited marketing space at the moment where there's not very many people. So now is the opportunity for you to, to get in. Um, and I would love to, um, love to see you have success in that marketing space through SMS. But guys, that's basically it from me, finishing right on time for a change, uh, not going over. That's, uh, that's normally a key for me. So uh, guys, please don't hesitate to connect with me over social media channels. I am a social media manager, so I'm on all of them. Not recommended for all of you business owners, but I would love to touch base with you. Or please don't hesitate to send me an email or a message via our website if you have any other questions. Thank you so much for joining me today. And again, a really appreciative to Business Station and the Digital Solutions Program for presenting this to you today. Go forth, use SMS marketing, guys, and grow your business. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.